In this lesson, we'll be creating a sway for the flowers. Okay, so what we want to do is try to prepare these flowers um, to be able to use our rotation property to make the bud and the stem rotate together. Now, first of all, let's see why we need to take some time to prepare. So if I select, let's just say the first stem and I hit the R key to bring up its rotation and I start dragging that, you can see that the bud does not move along with the stem. So so one of the first things we're going to need to do is get that bud to come in and be part of the stem. So for me, the best way to do that is just to create a pre-comp of the bud and stem together. So I'll select my FS1 outline and my FB1, because those go together, and I'll hit Control shift c to create a pre-comp, and we'll call this Flower1. Then you can go ahead and say OK. Then we'll do it for flower two, selecting flower two, and then control selecting the bud two. We'll hit control shift C. We'll call this flower two. And the same for the third one. Okay, so now we have three pre-comps, but they are defaulting to the size of our main composition. And that's going to be really hard if we want to grab anything else. Let's say I want to grab flower one. If I come over here um, and then let's say maybe I want to grab flower two, I would have to move flower one out of the way to get to it. So that's a lot of work, and I think we can make this a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is go into the flower one comp just by double clicking. And I'm going to turn off my transparency grid so I can see the outline really nicely against that background. And I'm just zooming in and kind of slightly pulling back a little bit there. And I'm going to show you a great way that you can cut down a composition really quickly without having to go into the composition settings and trying to adjust everything and also without having to move your object. So what I'll do is come up here and choose the region of interest. So if I left click that, and then I left click up here and draw a box around the flower. I can kind of adjust its dimensions. And then all I have to do is go up to composition and choose crop comp to region of interest. And when I click that, you can see it pops that comp down to that new size. Now I can go back out to my logo animation. And one problem is that it does change where this was coming from originally, but I can just kind of move it back into place. And you may even want to import your logo as a flat image and maybe use it to kind of lay that on top of and get everything in place. But for our purposes, I'm just going to position it back where I know that I want it to go and we'll just leave it there. Okay, now let's go into flower two, double click, turn off that transparency grid, zoom in a little bit, grab our region of interest, left click and drag it around the flower. We'll go up to composition and choose crop comp to region of interest. Then we'll come back over, move it into position, and then do the same for flower three. Just using the region of interest to draw the box of where you want the bounds of that composition to go. So what it's doing in here is making it a lot smaller of a composition, which in turn on the outside gives you a smaller bounding box for your layer, which just really makes everything a lot easier to work with. So now if I want to just come in and choose one of the different flowers, I don't have to worry about the other flowers comps overshadowing the whole project. Okay, so let's clear out of those. And now we have those kind of all uh, fixed up there a little bit easier now that the buds and the flowers can move around together when I grab them. But if I select the first one now and hit the R key to rotate, it's still rotating from the middle. So I'm going to undo that and we'll move their anchor points down to where they attach at the base. Now this might be a little bit hard to tell where they're attaching to the base because they're all the same color. So let's come into our leaves, hit the T key to bring up the opacity and just turn that down so we can see exactly where the base of the stems are. Then I'll grab flower one, come up and grab my pan behind anchor point tool, and we'll grab that anchor point and pull it down to the bottom. And that's gonna allow it to rotate from that point rather than in the middle. 
So you can see flower two would have been rotating from here when I left click and drag, now it's gonna rotate from the base. Same for flower three. Great, now let's come back in and turn our opacity back up for our leaves. Make sure you get that all the way back up to 100. And now when I come in here to rotate, I'll select flower one, hit the R key it's gonna rotate from the base. So I can add some really subtle little keys to make it look like it's swaying in the wind. However, it's gonna take a lot of keyframes to make that slightly sway over time, um, and then I'll have to do it to all three, and then I won't want them to be doing it at exactly the same time, at exactly the same pace, or it's just going to look a little odd. It's really not gonna add to the animation. So we need to find a better way of rotating than setting individual keyframes for each movement. And we can do this using an expression. So let's come back in the next lesson, and I'm gonna show you how to set up a wiggle expression for the rotation to create this sway over time.